Welcome to the Advice Show, Media with the Common Sense Approach. So we have a former Manhattan prosecutor was very upset after the verdict came from the grand jury that they're not going to indict the cop that killed Tamir Rice. Now, this woman went to Facebook and spoke out about the grand jury process. Now, you really need to listen how it works since this woman used to be a prosecutor and used to do this all the time. Now, this woman is speaking in colorful language. She's very upset. Some people do that when they're upset. But let me go ahead and roll the clip. A quick video on, because I, I know some things that I don't think you guys know. And um, I want to share it with you because my, my level of outrage and frustration is, is, is at an all-time high. I don't even want to fucking be in this country no more. You understand what I'm saying? I just want to fucking leave. But I need to share this with you. Y'all know I'm a lawyer, I'm a former prosecutor, and I'm currently a defense attorney. I was a prosecutor in Manhattan, New York City. So let me explain to you, because we are getting uh, a lot of feedback about these grand juries that are not indicting these police officers, and you need to understand something. The first thing you need to understand is that a grand jury presentation is an ex parte proceeding. What does that mean, Ike? Don't talk that lawyer shit. Okay, ex parte means one-sided. That means that there's only one side being presented in the grand jury. There is nothing to, to controvert or contradict what the prosecutor is putting in the grand jury, unless a defendant chooses to exercise his right to testify in the grand jury. And even then, the defendant is allowed to come in with counsel, but you as an attorney, me as an attorney, when I escort clients into the grand jury, I am not even allowed to fucking speak. Do you hear me? I'm not allowed to say shit. If I want to confer with my client because he might not be sure how to answer a question, we got to step outside and come back in. The grand jury, the entire presentation is controlled, is orchestrated by the prosecutor. The evidence that goes in, the witnesses that go in, how the evidence is presented. The spin. Prosecutors control the grand jury. There is no judicial in, uh, oversight. Now, that's not till after you got an indictment. There's no judicial oversight about how the case is going to be presented, what witnesses are going to be presented, what charges are going to be presented. All of that is at the exclusive discretion of the prosecutor. Exclusive. If a prosecutor wants to get an indictment, bet your ass they will get it. They will get it because that's saying it doesn't take anything to indict a ham sandwich is fucking true. It doesn't take anything. And I'm a former prosecutor. Of five years, I indicted motherfuckers for five whole years. Okay? And I'm telling you, it don't take shit to do it. So the fact that Eric Garner, Tamir Rice, the most recent one, and all the others that have been down the line that have come back with what's called a no true bill, meaning that there is no indictment, meaning the case is over and the case is dismissed, that's orchestrated. Okay? Understand that shit. Know that that's orchestrated. Okay? Be pissed off. If you're going to be pissed off about something, the legislatures need to change the way grand jury presentations are conducted. They shouldn't be ex parte proceedings. It shouldn't be so that the defense has no, no, you, you have no representation. You have, there are some times where indictments are being presented or evidence in the grand jury and you don't even know. Okay? They have secret proceedings. Okay? And the whole, and the whole grand jury presentation is fucking secret. Right? Secret. what that tell you? Anytime some shit is done in the secret, in the dark, the, 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 the chances for abuse. I mean, damn. It's like how fucking dumb do they expect us to be? We can't, this, 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 I, I don't, listen, I don't want to fight no more. I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck. I'm done with this shit. You can't keep banging your head against a wall and expecting the wall to give. That shit is cement. These people hate us. They hate us. They are killing not just us. They're not killing just our men. They're not killing just our women. They are killing our children. I have a 12-year-old son. I live in Nassau County. We're allowed to have airsoft fucking guns, airsoft pistols, BB guns. I won't let my son take one of those guns outside of our house. I have to sit him down and make sure he understands that your little white friend that you play with, he could play with the gun outside. You can't. 
You can't. This is fucking America. Fuck America. Fuck y'all, because y'all been fucking us for hundreds of years. And Ike is fucking tired. Now, this whole process that you heard from this woman is wrong. You should be judged by your peers, and the defense attorney should have an opportunity to review evidence. They should have an opportunity to interject and everything else. This is how this criminal justice system works in America. And as she stated, anything you have in, in secret can easily be corrupted. And California was one of the states that have banned grand juries on police shootings. It happened back in August of 2015. So I want to say bravo to California for stepping up and doing the right thing when it comes to the criminal justice system. Because this woman is showing how these cops get off. Every time you look up, that's how they get off. You look at Darren Wilson with the Michael Brown case. How did he get off a grand jury? He didn't have a day in court. He didn't go through a trial or none of that. What about that cop, Daniel Pantaleo, that uh, choked out Eric Garner? A grand jury said nothing was wrong with it, and he was free to go. You understand what I'm saying? So this woman is telling you how they set this stuff up. And you heard through the Michael Brown case, for instance, that that prosecutor has never prosecuted a cop for anything. He was on their boards and he was extremely pro police and all this other stuff. So you cannot expect someone who is pro them to be impartial, uh, to be unbiased and everything else. That's why you need to get someone from the outside. I always said if they do anything wrong, there's two things that need to happen. I think they should be judged like the military is judged. Um, at a stricter standard because you are law enforcement. And the second thing, it should be federal prosecutors that work on those cases that come from the outside. Nobody is from within. That way it can't be no friends or anything like that when these things happen. But this woman is upset and she stated that she wants to leave America. And there's a lot of black people that speak that way. That they say they want to leave this place because you uh, see it is two different Americas that happens in this country and i don't care if you don't like it it's the truth and the quicker you accept that then the quicker you learn how to navigate through this country you know you have a rule for black people you have rule for white folks it's just that simple like she said the the white kid can play with the airsoft gun but the black kid can't play with it remember tamir rice is in an open carry state but yet he was gunned down in two seconds that's the kind of stuff we're talking about as black people, you got to have the talk with your kids. And the talk is the police talk. How to conduct yourself with the police. What to do, what not to say, and all this other stuff. Because, you know, as a black person, they are nine times more likely to kill you than your white counterpart, which is a fact. So this is something that we need to look at and really push back against. Because it is wrong if you go to jail for doing the same thing that that a cop who's wrong doing it no they should not be above the law they should be held to a stricter standard with the law because they carry that badge because if you would act like that it would be a deterrent for those who are wrong to stop doing it because they don't want to get double the prison sentence that's how i would suggest whatever time if a citizen would get five years or something they should get 10 because you got that badge on you know better you know the rules and regulations, so you should not uh, be held to the same standard as an average citizen, period. But we will see how this is going. Now, we saw that the situation in Kentucky with Judge Olu Stevens talking about all white juries, that has been coming out. And now we looking at the grand jury process. So I think all these things, are the unfortunate things that's happening to cause this conversation, I think is good because we do need to get rid of certain things that make the process not fair and it could be very corrupt uh, when it comes to the criminal justice system. Then if somebody do go to jail, do they dead society, they're ruined because they can't get a job. Nobody want to hire them. That's why President Obama was pushing that ban the box or talking about someone's criminal history because how can a person turn their life around if they cannot even get a job? I mean, that's just screwed up. And you're setting them up to go right back to be incarcerated. So we look, need to look more into that. And that's just everybody look more into this grand jury situation. I think we shouldn't have no grand juries. Just let a trial uh, happen and then just it be decided from there. 
and get rid of these, you know, all white juries. I think it should be diverse, even though some people say they don't pick the juries themselves. The issue isn't the people that's being on the juries. The issue is these prosecutors who want to pick people to try to get that guilty verdict. Because even if you look in that study, uh, it's a higher conviction rate for minorities when it's an all white jury. But if it's just one black person on the jury, the conviction rate for blacks and whites are even based on a Duke University study on those juries. So it's the things that we have to look at to reform the criminal justice system. We'll see if they get done. Hit me up in the comments, future commentaries, subscribe.